Welcome back to another Curls in the Rack video, guys, where I don't get any bigger. The shirts just keep getting smaller. On this video, we are going to be doing a modification slash DIY video in which we're going to take a free, repurposed, unused dumbbell power block stand, and uh, I'm going to add wheels to it, and I'm also going to paint it. So let me show you exactly why you may want to do this if you have something similar. It doesn't have to be this stand, but uh, why you might want to do this and uh, why it might be beneficial to you. Now, the main reason I want to do this modification is basically because the color really did not match the gym. It kind of looked like it belonged in one of those old school commercial gyms, like the flat gray. Uh, so I decided since I had leftover paint from doing all the other projects around here, I would go ahead and make this one red too. So we'll do red and black accents. That'll look pretty good. The second thing is the fact that this thing is a higher gauge steel. Uh, so I knew that I could throw wheels on this one and if you saw I posted on Instagram my old DIY one Which I've had for like maybe eight years or so uh, Works great, but it's it's kind of flimsy and over time, you know, the little feet started to break off of it So this was a higher gauge steel. So it was a no-brainer to grab it uh, And the fact that it is higher gauge steel it allows me to put wheels on it So what I did was I took the wheels from the rogue weight tree which didn't work well and that'll actually be my next video that i'm going to do show you how to upgrade the wheels on that one so it moves around smoother but anyways that's for that's for next time i'll stop rambling uh it's wheels and the paint so basically what i wanted to be able to do is since the rack is over there and when i wanted to be able to use these for dumbbell presses overhead presses whatever the case may be inside of the rack where the bench is i want to be able to roll it over there safely switch out the weights, do all the increments right there, and then push it back when I was done. So that's why I did this, and uh, it works pretty well. I'll show you at the end of the video. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to the build. I'll voice over it, and uh, you can see exactly the whole process, so you could do the same thing if you choose. Now, the first step, obviously, is going to be disassembly of the other one. Now, I didn't go ahead and disassemble the whole thing. All I wanted to do was take off the top portion of it because I wasn't gonna paint that. I'm gonna leave it black, I'll clean it up. Uh, but uh, I also wanted to get rid of the rust on these particular bolts that were at the top. Uh, so that is what I'm doing here. After I took off these bolts, uh, what I do is I use this stuff called TriFlow. And if you spray some of this, you could spray on stuff obviously that is on the rack or whatever the case may be, but it does a really good job at removing any kind of rust. They almost look perfectly new when you're done. And next, it's time to get set up to paint. Now, before when I painted, uh, I didn't do the best job with the plastic uh, and there were still some spots on the gym floor mat that have red paint on them, but that's okay. I can remove those later with acetone, not a big deal, but this time I meticulously put plastic over everything and made sure that there was no gaps. Next, it's time to hang up our project and since this guy already had little tiny holes at the bottom, I decided to use a chain, throw it over the uh, pull-up bar here and then put some hooks on it and hook it and hang it up. Next, it's time to paint. Uh, what I did was I went ahead and used that same spray paint gun that I used in the other builds, but I decided to skip using the primer this time. More of an experiment. Uh, it did save time. I don't have to sand it down. Uh, I didn't use any of the primer. Uh, I just did a few coats on here, and then um, I wanted to see if it would hold up just as well as the one surplus strength uh, clone that I made. Uh, so it's kind of an ongoing experiment. So far, none of the paint is chipped off, so we will see.
After I did a few coats, uh, and as you can see here, it's easy when you have it on a chain to be able to spin it around and do all the sides. One thing I didn't do well was I didn't have that right hand side taped down and it, uh, it sort of touched the project. So I, I readjusted on that side, learned from my mistake, make sure all of the stuff is sealed properly and tight. That way, none of the plastic will touch your project and smear the paint. After that sucker had dried sufficiently and I wanted to do the underside of it, I just took it off the chain and then uh, popped it down still in the middle of our uh, painting area. There. And finally, I did a couple coats on this side and as you can see, uh, it's taken a long time because the paint started to run out. So I went and grabbed some more readjusted and, uh, and reapplied here. So eventually, it looked pretty nice. I think I did, I think I did three coats. Now my initial plan was to just bore out the existing holes that you would use to bolt this stand to the floor and um, go ahead and use the existing bolts, but I wanted to cut them down because I didn't want them sticking up so far since that's not necessary since it's a thin piece of metal, then use the nuts on the top to secure them. But you'll see why this doesn't work very well or I saw eventually that they're, they're too close to the middle. They're not, they're not providing stability on the outer corner. So this was not an option, but I am just gonna go ahead and show you the rest of the footage here at leading up to the point where I discover this was a bad idea. And as you can see, the bolts, they just sat in there for a few hours. And uh, once I uh, removed them, all the rust was gone and uh, they look new again. So I reassembled it. And the reason I'm showing this footage here is I'm not gonna show it at the end. Uh, this, this is just reassembly. It's pretty straightforward. You're putting it back together exactly how it was, uh, but you'll see in a minute. Uh, once you put the weight on there, it, it tends to be a bit tippy. You can get away with it if you're really being careful, but I didn't want to have the chance that somebody comes out here you know, my kid or something and pulls it over on themselves. So that's why I decided it's not a good idea to use the bolts on the inside. I'm gonna need to make new ones. After I reassembled it, I noticed that this piece had some dust on the inside. I figured the best way was just run a rag through there, kind of clean it up a bit and then uh, pull it out the other side. Uh, and that seemed to work pretty well. Okay, moment of truth where I thought the video was going to end. Uh, rolling it around, great, but if you pull it towards yourself, uh, it tends to tip, especially when the wheels are on the more inside portion of it. You can see this is where I realized, oh crap, never mind, we're not gonna do that. So, what I did was I took the wheels, and since I had some wait time, I went ahead and painted them black. Because another thing I noticed once I threw this thing together was I didn't like the chrome look at the bottom. I'd rather that these roller and casings be black and so I had the time since I was going to work on the rest of it why not paint them black now what I did here was I used the existing holes that are on the underside that go right into the middle of the steel and those ones worked well. What I did was I used a tap and die set after I bore out the hole to the correct diameter. And uh, if you need to know how to use a tap and die set, I go in more depth on my power block dumbbell handle upgrade video. So if you check that one out, uh, you can see more of that. So I won't go into how to use a tap and die set on this one, but that is what I did here. Make sure that I got the threading right for the bolt that was gonna go in there. And then after I was done, I just tested it to make sure that it, I could screw in with the, um, with the leftover piece that I'd cut off.
Now, on the back side, if you notice and you look right in that hole beneath where I'm drilling that pilot hole, the outer wall is basically right where this hole is on there. So I wasn't gonna bore that one out and chance coming through the front of it. That would look pretty sloppy and I have to fix it. And so I decided why not go right in the middle with this guy and I made a pilot hole and then I also bored it out to the correct size for the bolt. And uh, yeah, it did take a bit longer, but I just didn't want chance ruining the piece. And finally, the last step was to test and make sure that these guys were gonna fit in there. So that's what I did. I screwed them all in. I'm using the glove because just in case the paint wasn't dry yet and uh, they all fit in perfectly and uh, they were good to go. And now finally, as you can see, this was the reason that I wanted this. For these days, I wanted to use the dumbbells. Front of the rack, I wanna be able to roll them up here, use them, change increments, and then put them away when I'm done with them. Well, that's all I have for the video today, guys. And if it helped one person out by upgrading their power block stand so that they could roll it around and not have to go halfway across the gym to change up the weights if they're trying to do drop sets or whatever, then I am happy and that's why I did it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram where I mix it up with people who don't really like me very much. And also on the next video, it's gonna be one of two. It's either gonna be a product review, which I'm super excited about, or it's gonna be the wheel upgrade on the Rogue Weight Tree. Uh, didn't like the fact that these little tiny wheels, when you moved it from mat to mat, got kind of stuck. And so I went ahead and upgraded them with some bigger, beefier ones. So I will show you guys how to do that on the next video. And uh, until next time, guys, thanks for watching and peace.